This is Tana with six different ways for how to compress a PowerPoint presentation, and you can use all six of these techniques combined if you want to, depending on what you're trying to accomplish to reduce your PowerPoint file size. Now, you really only need to do this when you're one, struggling to share your presentation with someone else, or two, maybe you find that your presentation is running slowly, which could be a number of issues from pictures to videos to 3D models, all of which I will show you how to solve or compress inside this video, plus a few pro tips to help you along the way. Compressing pictures and images in PowerPoint. So here's an example of how much space you could save compressing just a single image in PowerPoint. And you can see that the more you compress your image, the more space you save, moving from 330 PPI to 96 PPI, which is good for email. So in this case, if you had, for example, 10 images in your presentation, if you compress them from 330 PPI to a lower 220 PPI for print, you could save 10 megabytes or more, depending on what the size of your image was. The one thing to be aware of, and this happens to people all the time, is as you further compress your images, you can over compress your images to the point that they get grainy, which kills your presentation. And I'll give you an example of that in just a second. First off, let me quickly show you how to do this. So in PowerPoint, if you select your image, you come to the picture format tab, you have the compression option right here. Here you have a variety of different options. So apply only to this picture. I recommend keeping that checked. Delete cropped areas of pictures. In this case, if I select my photo, and I come to the crop command, you can see the top and bottom of the photo have been cropped out to resize this to the 16 by nine. I simply use the crop to aspect ratio, 16 by nine. So if I select, I'll hit escape, picture format, compress. If I select delete cropped areas, that top and bottom part of my photo will be removed, which will make my photo even smaller. After that, you're simply gonna select a compression ratio. I'll just select 220 PPI, click okay. You can see now the photo is smaller. You won't see it here, but notice that those cropped areas are now removed. Now, the one thing to be aware of is as you move from the different compression ratios, so 330 PPI, I'll hit Shift F5, moving to 96 PPI, notice that the image quality, quality look down here at the boardwalk or the walkway as I flip between these two images. So this photo, email 96 PPI, is a lot grainier or not as clear. You can see the, the details here. You can see some of the details over here in the columns as I flip between these. So this is where you need to be aware of how much you compress your photos. And it's important here to remember that size matters when compressing. And by that, I mean the size of the photo on your slide is what PowerPoint will compress to, which means that if you compress this, and I'll give you an example to, for example, the email resolution, but then you later resize the image outside of the original size, you're gonna see that it's going to very quickly over compress and all of this is gonna look very, very bad. So here's a quick example of that. And I'll come back into PowerPoint. So if I take this photo, picture format, and I compress it to email, so the lowest compression ratio, all right, click okay. Not that much happens here, but if I come to the next slide, so size matters, and now I compress this picture to the email 96 PPI, and then I resize it on my slide, you're gonna see, although it's the same picture, let's just send it to the back, although it's the same picture, and it's the same size with the same compression ratio, because this second one started smaller and then I resized it to fit my entire slide, it now looks over compressed. So that's just a quick pro tip and what I mean by size matters when compressing. So the size of the image, when you compress it, if you compress it and then resize it to a larger image, you're gonna get a lot of over compression in your images, which is gonna make your presentations look ugly. Compressing videos and multimedia in PowerPoint. And here's an example of how much space you might be able to save for a single video in PowerPoint. And again, the more you compress the video, the more space you will save. Now in this case, the last two options, 770 and 480, it doesn't save very much, but you can see as I moved from the original down to 1080p, I saved over 600 megabytes. And I shot this video using my webcam, so it wasn't the best. So let's look at how to compress videos and songs or other multimedia here in PowerPoint. So here I have that original video. I also have a song that I wanna play in the background of my presentation. To compress these files, I come to the File tab, I come to the Info tab, and here you have the Compress Media Options. Now 1080p works for most cases, so I would start there before you move to a lower case. This takes a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna cancel out of that and show you what it looks like here on the next slide. So after that works for a while, it'll tell you that it's done. It's then going to show you, all right, what the original file sizes were. 
and how much it saved you. So to figure out how much it is now, you simply do the math. This was 10 megabytes, I saved six, so my song or my presentation background is now four megabytes. Now if you do compress your videos or your songs and you later wanna undo that, if you go back to that compress media option and you open it up, you do have the options to back your way out of it. It'll show you what you've actually done. It'll let you go back all the way to the original and then you can choose a different compression ratio if you want to. Now, one quick thing, if you are narrating your presentation, so you're coming to slideshow and you're using the record slideshow option, either just audio or audio and video, PowerPoint automatically compresses those videos and audio files so you don't have to, again, let me just come in here to show you, you don't have to come up to the file tab, come to info, and then come in and compress those media files if you're narrating your presentation. Cleaning out your PowerPoint slide masters to save space. So here's an interesting example of a PowerPoint presentation that is 11.7 megabytes, but if I open it up, notice that there's just three basically blank slides with some text on it. So how could a presentation with just three basically blank slides be 11.7 megabytes? Well, if I hit Control M to insert a new slide and I come to the layout dropdown, notice that there are two picture layouts in this presentation. So these pictures will count as PowerPoint file size space, whether or not you actually use those in your presentation. On top of that, if I hit Control P to print, and I come to the full page slides layout, notice if I come to the handout master, the handout master someone has put a picture on it. This picture will also count for PowerPoint file space, and I'll show you how to remove this in just a second as well as if I come to the notes page, someone has also added two strips of two different pictures on the side. So these different places or images in these different slide master views will count as file size space against you. So what you would wanna do if you're not gonna use any of those pictures, you wanna come to the view tab. You wanna first start with the slide master. So I could come in, I could find these pictures and I could delete them. Now just keep in mind that this is now going to be changing this PowerPoint template. And if you need help building your own PowerPoint template, you can check out our little free mini series here on YouTube. I'll close that master view. I could come to the view tab, handout master. This is where you can format your handouts, um, printing multiple slides per page. If you wanna check out that video and I'll also come to view tab, notes master, and I will again remove these different photos. Now, keeping in mind that this is completely changing the underlying PowerPoint template, because I just want these three slides and I want to be able to send this to a colleague, that will reduce this PowerPoint file size from maybe 11 megabytes to something more like 325 kilobytes, which will make this a lot easier to share with my colleagues. Swap out 3D models and videos. So here's an example of how much space you can save in PowerPoint by swapping out a single 3D model. In this case, it's going to be a 3D Rhino, swapping it out with a 2D picture of a Rhino. So from 26 megabytes to almost two, so it's saving just about 24 or 25 megabytes by swapping out this one 3D image for a photo. And the same thing is true for videos. So for example, this is an example, if you've never seen one before, of a 3D model in PowerPoint. You do need the latest version of Microsoft, Microsoft 365 subscription, which you can look at for the description for links to check that out. This is a 26 megabyte object in PowerPoint, and I'll show you how you can tweak this um, to do some cool things in a second, versus taking that 3D model or video and popping in just a 2D visual of whatever it is. So in this case, I've just found a picture of a rhino. This is 1.6 megabytes and I haven't compressed the image yet. So that's saving again, 24 megabytes, maybe 25 megabytes of space in this case for each video or 3D model you swap out like this. Now just for some quick examples of how cool these 3D models are, how to work with them. If you have the latest version of PowerPoint, again, check the description box for links to this. If you come to the models dropdown, from online sources. You're gonna see a variety of um, 3D models you can use. I use these ones up here on the left, have cool animations attached with them. I'm not gonna insert one because it takes a little bit of time. They are 26 megabytes. But if you select your 3D model, once you've inserted it, you get a 3D model tab. If you have an animated sequence, in this case, the Rhino can charge, the Rhino can walk slower. You can choose, if you just look at these different angles to position the Rhino a different way for your presentation. Um, it's all very cool. The same would be true for a video. You have a bunch of different video options, but in this case, because this is such a large file, moving to a picture of it, and again, if this was a video like this, this could easily be 10, 20, 30 megabytes. 
even if you compressed it. So by just swapping it out for one single image, you're gonna save a ton of space. Now, obviously, all right, the 3D walking Rhino is way cooler than a 2D version of it, but when it comes to saving space, reducing your PowerPoint presentation, kind of the similar as compressing it, by swapping these 3D models and videos out into 2D static photos you can compress, you're gonna save yourself a lot of file space, making it easier to share your presentation with your colleagues. Convert PowerPoint to a PDF. And here's an example of how much space you can save by converting PowerPoint to a PDF. So in this case, my PowerPoint file is decreasing by about 13 or so megabytes. So it's about a factor of six times smaller by converting it to a PDF. And I'll show you a quick little trick here as I do this. So if I come into PowerPoint, I have just an earlier slide deck I was using with a bunch of pictures in it. To convert PowerPoint to a PDF, simply hit F12 on your keyboard to open the Save As dialog box. In the Save As dialog box, you wanna to come to Save As Type, simply choose from PowerPoint presentation to a PDF. You don't need to rename your file because it's being saved as a completely different file type, so you can keep the same name. But here's a little pro tip when you do this. If you open up these tool options, notice you have the Compress Pictures option down here just for the PDF. So you don't have to first compress your images in PowerPoint and then convert to a PDF. You simply come and open up the compressed pictures dialog box, which will again allow you to cropped areas out of pictures. We'll choose a different compression ratio. Again, the, the more you compress your images, um, the more file space you'll save, but the grainier they'll become. So I'm just gonna choose print 220 PPI, click OK. I'm gonna save it in the same exact location as my PowerPoint presentation, and it should open up a PowerPoint or a PDF of my PowerPoint presentation that I can see there. And if I come to the file, you can see there is my original PowerPoint deck, 15.8 megabytes. My new PDF is 2.7. Now, a couple of things to be aware of as you convert PowerPoint to PDF, you're obviously gonna lose your videos, your 3D models, your animations, your transitions, etc. But this again is a super fast way if you're just trying to share this with someone, the slides themselves, and maybe they don't need to edit them, that you can also use this to protect your presentation. It's a very quick way to compress your file size so you can share your presentation with your clients and colleagues. Compress PowerPoint as a zip folder. And here's some examples of how much space you can save by zipping your PowerPoint presentations. And it, it varies depending on your presentation. So for example, in this case, I've saved about 6% moving from this media heavy presentation into a zip folder, which you can see the little zipper is your indicator that it's a zip folder. In the second scenario, I've saved about 40% of space why? Simply because it's different content in it as I move to the zip folder. So how much space you save going this route will differ depending on your presentation, but let me quickly show you how to do it. If I just come to the folder where these presentations are, you simply need to right click your presentation. You're gonna select send to compressed zip folder, PowerPoint or Microsoft Windows will go to work. You're gonna see it's going to do that. I'll do it for the second one, simply send to zip folder and you can put as many files you want inside the zip folder and it's going to compress those once you send this to someone and again you can put multiple files in here to save more space all someone needs to do is right click simply select extract all select extract all and the powerpoint presentation will open back up that someone can you know open up run etc natively in microsoft powerpoint so that's six different ways for how to compress a PowerPoint presentation to save on or reduce your PowerPoint file space. And you can use all six of these if you want. If you're new to our channel and want to keep up to date on our latest PowerPoint hacks, tips and trick, what I call PowerPoint hack trickery, just look for the subscribe button down below. And if you're just looking for PowerPoint resources to help get you to happy hour, like PDF cheat sheets and mini series, just look for the links directly beneath this video. This is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Training, and I'll see you at happy hour.